Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the famous poem A Thing of Beauty by John Keats about the poem. Sorry, about the poet. This is about John Keats. John Keats, who, whose life was from 1795 to 1821, was a British romantic poet. Although trained to be a surgeon, Keats decided to devote himself wholly to poetry. John Keats was one of the main figures of the second generation of Romantic poets, along with Lord Byron and Fibition. Despite his work having been, public, having been in publication for only four years before his death, means the, there were three main figures of the second generation of Romantic poets. They were Lord Byron, P.V. Shelley and of course jo John Keats. Despite the fact that his works were published only four years before his death. Keats, Keats' secret, his power to sway and delight the readers, lies primarily in his gift for perceiving the world and living his moods and aspirations in terms of language. This means that the secret of Keats' success, Keats' power to sway and delight the readers, this lies primarily in the gift that God has given him. The gift of perceiving the world, of understanding the world and then explaining it and then putting it in terms of language and then putting it in poetry and that is what has made Keats a very, very successful poet, a very successful poet of second generation. Through this poem, the poet John Keats had tried to present before the readers the importance of beautiful things in our day-to-day -day life. A thing of beauty is actually an excerpt, is actually an extract from Keats' first epic poem, Indimayon, a poetic <coughs> romance, which was first of all published in 1880. <coughs> epic poem is a long poem that tells the story of a hero's adventures. This means that the poem, A Thing of Beauty, that has been prescribed in your syllabus, that has been given in your syllabus, is actually a part of the larger epic Indimayon, a poetic romance. This poem, A Thing of Beauty, is written in rhyming couplets and the rhyme scheme employed is AABB. The poet has used iambic pentameter in the poem. I'll explain rhyming couplets and rhyme scheme while I'll explain the poem, then I'll explain it line by line. This poem is based on a Greek legend in which Indimayon, a beautiful young shepherd and poet who lived on Mount Latmus, has a vision of Cynthia, the moon goddess. The enchanted youth resolved to seek her out and so wandered away through the forest and down under the sea. Now, legend means a story from the past that is believed by many people, but it cannot be proved that it, that is a legend. So this poem is a, based on a Greek legend in which Indimayon, Indimayon is actually a name of a beautiful young shepherd and who is also a poet and this guy lived on Mount Latmus. He has a vision of Cynthia. Who is Cynthia? Cynthia is the moon goddess. And this youth, after having a vision of moon goddess, is very much attracted by it and so he decides to seek or search her out. And this is... This poem is actually based on this legend. As I have told you before, the theme of this poem is that Keats puts, puts emphasis on the importance and necessity of beautiful things in our day-to-day -day life. <laughs> now I have provided you the meanings of some difficult words. First of all, it is boar. In this poem, this has been used with the meaning a pleasant and peaceful place under tree shades. Second, moro. Moro means morning or also the next day. Third is rath. Rath means to surround, interweave or to weave or twist together. This meaning is when rath is used as verb. Then fourth is despondence. Despondence means depression of spirits from loss of courage or hope. Fifth, it's inhuman. Inhuman, when used as adjective, it means very fierce or cruel. But in this poem,
poem, this word has been used with the meaning extremely poor or extreme or something very very extreme. Sixth, it's dirt. Scarcity or lack of something. Then gloomy. When gloomy is used as an adjective, it means partially or totally dark. Something that causes feelings of sadness. Then it's pall. Pall means funeral cloth. Here in this poem, it has been used with the meaning disappointment. <coughs> then it's proud. Proud means to grow or develop something. <coughs> then there's shady. Shady means giving or providing shade or shelter. Boon. Boon means a benefit, a favor or a blessing. Rills, rills. Rills means small streams. Covert, covert means shelter. Then it's break. Break means a thick mass of ferns. This is what ferns are. Then it's daffodils. Daffodils are a yellow are yellow flowers that bloom in the spring. This is how a daffodil looks like. William Wurzel also described the beauty of a daffodil in his famous poem Daffodils. Then it's sprinkling. Sprinkling means scattering. Then it's, then it's must. Musk is a strong smelling substance used in perfumes or musk is any of the various plants with musky odor or especially the musk plant. Means this is a type of plant that has an odor like that of a musk. Then it blooms. Blooms means flowers. When it is noun then it means flowers. Then grandeur. Grandeur means a great and impressive quality, glory or magnificence. Then it's doom. Usually doom means ruin or death. But here in this poem it has been used with the meaning fate. Then it's mighty. Mighty means powerful or extraordinary. Then it's brink. Brink means edge or the point of beginning of something. As I told you before, this poem, A Thing of Beauty, is actually an extract from the famous epic Endymion. It is pronounced as Endymion. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. This means that a thing of beauty is a source of eternal joy. The joy that our beautiful things provide us exists with us forever. Its loveliness increases. Means the loveliness of a beautiful thing increases with time and it will never pass into nothingness. This means that the beautiful things, the beautiful thing that we see or the very nice experiences of our life never comes to an end. It exists with us throughout our life because it gives a deep impressions in our mind. But will keep a bore quiet for us and a sleep full of sweet dreams and health and quiet breathing. A beautiful thing provides us the peace of mind, the peace, the happiness that a boar provides, a tree shed provides to a traveler in a scorching sun, sun sun. And a sleep, the peace of mind that we feel after sleeping and having sweet dreams, that peace of mind a beautiful thing also provides. And the peace of mind, the happiness that a good health provides and quiet breathing. Means good health and quiet breathing, the happiness that these things provide or the peace of mind that these things provide is also provided by a thing of beauty. Therefore, on every morrow are we wreathing a flowery band to bind us to the earth. Morrow means morning or next day and wreathing means to leave. So in these lines the poet is trying to say that on every morning, on every next day, we weave a band, a garland of flowers around us means a garland of something, a string of good memories, a string of good moments around us so that we can bind ourselves to earth or we can say that a, mem a string of good memories or a string of good things, beautiful things, we build a string of that so that we find a reason for our existence on this earth. Flower, flower is a symbol of freshness. Flower is a symbol of beauty. So this flowery band has been used here to symbolize a string of beautiful things, a garland of memories, spite of despondence of the inhuman dirt. Here spite uh, has been used in the sense in spite. 
This means that in spite of despondence, in spite of lack of any hope, of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, means extreme, dearth means, it stands for scarcity, and here inhuman means extreme, means there is an extreme scarcity of noble people on this earth. Because there is, it is very hard to find good people in these times. So in spite of lack of people of good natures on this earth and in spite of the gloomy days. Gloomy days means days full of sadness, there is lack of light, full of darkness. This means that, that in spite of all this sadness around us, a beautiful things, beautiful things can make us feel happy and provide us a peace of mind of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways, made for our searching, yes, in spite of all. Means in spite of despondence, of the, of the inhuman dearth of noble natures, of the gloomy days, of all the unhealthy and over darkened ways, made for our searching. Means the ways through which we travel to find our goals. That those ways are quite dark and there is lack of light, there is lack of hope in these ways. And it is also unhealthy, means it uh, doesn't provide us good health and at the same time the ways are not honest. And for finding our goals, we don't know which way, way to travel because there is not much hope, not much light in these ways. Made for our searching, the ways that are made for us, the ways that... Uh, that through which we have to travel to achieve our goal, that ways are over darkened. And in spite of all this, in spite of all these thing, things of sadness, a beautiful thing, a beautiful moment, a beautiful memory, a beautiful experience can make everything change and can, make, can provide us a peace of mind, can provide us a beautiful memory can provide us something very, can provide us happiness, can provide us a peace of mind. Yes, in spite of all, some shape of beauty moves away the ball from our dark spirits. Yes, in spite of all means that in spite of all the things that we have discussed in the previous lines, that in spite of the sadness that cover our life, in spite of the darkness, that in spite of lack of hope in our lives, there are some shapes of beauty, there are some things of beauty that can move away the cover of dark spirits, that can move away the darkness from our lives. Then uh, what are these shapes of beauty? They are such the sun, the moon, trees old and young, sprouting a shady bloom for simple sheep. Means these shapes of beauty are the sun, the moon, the trees and these trees are the best examples of beauty because trees don't partialize between things and people. Trees whether old or young they provide a boon, a shady boon. Means the shade is just like a boon for the travelers, for the animals and it doesn't only provide the shade to rich people, to mighty people but also to simple to even to an innocent sheep to as simple as an animal means it provide shades trees provide shape shades to every creatures so these are the best examples of beauty these are considered trees are considered the best examples of beauty and such are daffodils to the green world they live in they live in means and such such shapes of beauty also include the beautiful flower daffodils in fact to uh, Daffodils are considered very beautiful flowers. In fact, the famous poem, poet William Wordsworth has written an entire poem, The Daffodils, on these flowers only. And with the green world they live in, means these daffodils live in a green world in forest and nature are at their best. Nature, nature is at its best in the green pastures and meadows and clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make against the hot season. Rills means streams, so altogether this green world means the forest, the rivers, the trees, they provide a cooling covert, a cooling shelter against the hot season. Means when anyone travel in, in, a, in a scorching sunlight and they get shade or they get a water source to drink water, they feel quite relieved. 
So in the hot season, the forests, the streams provide a cooling shelter. They are just like a cooling covert, a cooling shelter. The mid forest drake, rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms. Drake means a uh, ferns, group of ferns. Uh, have you ever seen ferns on a stream? When it's, it is grown very widely, means it's grown very much, then it just look like, like a green velvet. It just look like a green velvet, very, very beautiful. So this mid forest break is also a symbol, a thing of beauty. It is, and these forests, they are rich with a sprinkling of fair musk rose blooms. Means the atmosphere of forest of this green world is filled with the blossoms, the, the what we say, the great smell, the fragrance of these flowers, musk and rose. So this, the fragrance, the beautiful smell, these are also a sign of beauty because this refreshes our mind and this provides us a peace of mind, a peace of heart, a peace of soul. And such too is the grandeur of tombs we have imagined for the mighty dead. This means that what uh, there arises a question, what is the relationship between grandeur and mighty dead? Why are the mighty dead considered grandeur? means that the people, the great people who die, then tombs and monuments are created in their memories. Just like uh, there is a monument, Taj Mahal in Agra. It is built in the memory of Mumtaz Mahal, the beloved wife of Shah Jahan. And it is a very, very beautiful monument. It is, a, it is one of the seven wonders of the world. So these beautiful, these, these are artificial things, but this these things are also a sign of beauty, a thing of beauty. So, and such too is the grandeur of the tombs we have imagined for the mighty dead. Means the great people who die, we build, we build tombs and monuments in their memory so that they can be immortal. The, the mortal body, their mortal body dies, but the teachings that they, get, they have given us in their lives, through their lives, should be immortal. And so to make them immortal, we build these monuments, tombs in their memory. And they are very beautiful, they are very magnificent. So these things are also a sign of beauty because when we see these things, we memorize those people, their good deeds, their good sayings, and so it adds a color to our life. All lovely tales that we have heard or read, means also the, the stories, the tales that we hear or read, these things are also a sign of beauty because they also refresh our mind. Because when we read about some great people, then we get, we always get to learn from their lives and also we get a source of inspiration. And there are some stories that, that suddenly change our mood, that add a color to our lifeless life, to a life that has nothing to deal with. But, but when we read the stories of some great people, uh, we get to, we get some inspiration from it, we get some understanding of their lives. Then we also try to overcome our obstacles in life. So this, these stories, the lovely tales, some romantic tales are very, very, very well said or written. So when we read some lovely tales, then also our mind refreshes. We get some inspirations to deal with our hard in life, to deal with our hard life. And so the lovely tales that we hear or read, these tales are also a thing of beauty because it also provides us a peace of mind, a peace of soul. An endless fountain of immortal drink pouring unto us from the heaven's drink, drink means edge. So these things of beauty, there's lots of things of beauty, the sun, the moon, the trees, the sheep, daffodils, forests, streams, the smell, the fragrance of musk and rose, the tombs, monuments, or the lovely tales, all these beautiful things, this these beautiful things are a perennial source of happiness for us. It's just like that God has created these beautiful things to add color to our life, to add spices to our life, to make our life more happening, to make our life more beautiful. So these beautiful things are an endless fountain, an endless source of immortal drink pouring unto us that has, that has been coming to our life directly from the heaven, from heaven's edge. Means this, so, these things of beauty will 
continuously add color to our life and it will starting coming to this very start that a thing of beauty is a source of joy and it will never pass into nothing less like that means now we can conclude that these things of beauty will never come into and it will always bring happiness into our lives now we will deal with the rhyme scheme starting rhyme scheme here we have to discuss about rhyme scheme and it's uh, rhyming couplets means the every two consecutive lines every two consecutive lines the ending words rhyme with each other like here it's all and fall the ending words rhyme with each other then it's moon and boon these also rhyme with each other and it's daffodils and drills these two words also rhyme with rhyme with each other and so on so we have said before only that the rhyming scheme is a b b means uh, the first line and the second line they rhyme with each other this means a then the third line doesn't rhyme with the first and second but it rhymes with the fourth so it's b b and it's it continues the same pattern continues Uh, this rhyme scheme is from the beginning line only if you pay attention to it you can find it that's all thank you i hope you had a better understanding of the poem if you have any queries regarding these poems you may put it in the comment box or you may email me at swarnshikha28@gmail.com please like and subscribe if you like the way i describe poems thank you